Well, good morning, socially distanced church. Well done. <laughs> and to you at home, uh, we greet you on this, uh, in the middle of our Christmas season, the last Sunday in the Christmas season, and also the beginning of a new year. So uh, I won't wish you a happy new year because happiness is, is the result of things going right. So we just pray that you may have a Christ-filled new year and then the rest will follow. Will you join with me in prayer? Let us pray. Our God, what better way to start the new year than to be focused on the Christ child, the presence of God come into the world. Oh Lord, you have come to love and to be loved. Today we want to celebrate that. A new year has come and with it comes all the the worries and concerns of what it is to be human in this world today. But we don't come with despair, we come with hope because of Christ. There is light in the darkness. There is light that invites us in to, to dance and to live and to love and to have joy. And we thank you for this light. A living God, we pray for your church we pray for Living Faith Church especially, that we may be a sign of the presence of that light. May we be a sign of joy and justice and love in the world. May it be so, our God, not in our strength, but in your strength. May you shine through us and in us. We thank you today for bread and wine. We thank you today for song and for laughter. We thank you for prayer in which we can bring our innermost needs to you and know that we are heard. Oh Lord, we thank you for the living God dwells among us as light in the darkness. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I invite you to join with us in song, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Angels from the realms of glory, lift your tight for all the earth. Heralds of creation's story, now tell
is from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which, which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children not of natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace, in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses' grace and truth, and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Today we come to share the bread and the wine. This is not simply a meeting with a, a nameless God or um, taking the divinity into ourselves through bread and wine and a mystery taking place. This is about Jesus, who in an upper room gathered with his disciples and invited them to take part in him, in his flesh and in his blood. But what it meant is to take part in him and who he is and who he was. And who is Jesus who we take into ourselves? He is the one who sought the lost in the community those who dwelt in the darkness unseen by everyone else. He came as a light and shined on the dark corners of life. And there he found people who were lost, who were outcast, who were rejected. And he welcomed them in to his fellowship, even as you and I are welcomed in to this fellowship today. There is nothing and no one that is lost that cannot be found. We have learnt this through Jesus. He also shone the light on other dark places, places of power and oppression. Not so that he could be mean to them, but so that in exposing that injustice, he could offer a new way of life. And so he shines the light on our lives in things that need to change and offers us new life. This is the Christ the one who died for us so that our sins may be forgiven, who holds and bears no grudge. This is the one we take into ourselves through the bread and the wine. Will you pray with me? Oh God, how we thank you for sending Jesus Christ. For now we know your character, your nature not just eternal, immortal, all-powerful, 
all those words that are so far from our understanding, but also the seeker of the lost, the saviour, the forgiver, the one who tends our wounds and binds us up. We thank you, our God, for revealing to us who you really are. May you now prepare our hearts that we may be prepared to receive you once again into our lives. Through Christ our Saviour. Amen. He gathered with his disciples in the upper room and broke bread and said, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I invite you now to bring out your elements if you have not done so already. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Our God, as the flavour lingers on our tongue, may your spirit linger in our souls for the whole week until we meet at your table again. Through Christ, Amen. Now, for the kids today, we, you've got your activities, which is good. We've also got another little activity up here. You may have noticed, because um, we had no kids last week, unless you were looking online, you would have seen that we've added some angels. And so we're really keen that uh, we've got three angels up there. Oh, yeah, and we've got the shepherds as well. And we've got Mary and the wise person. And there's a purple wise person down there too. Now, the, there's a trick with the angels. There is a trick. Because the others, you just cut around them and then just stuck it at the back. But this is different. Excuse me, I'll just grab some scissors. All right. So here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> See, so you've got to... Yeah, I you, Yep, you've got to cut out all the white bits, including around the head, all right? And the black line just there, and there's another black line there. That's important because this one's got a fold in it. So I'll just finish cutting it out. Like so. So now we've got the round shape at the end. So we've got to fold that forward. All right. So the angel wings cover the belly. So there you go. Got to fold like that. And then you join it at the back. So once it's folded forward, turn it over and join it at the back. And then we get our sticky tape over here. There's some sticky tape, and voila, a French angel. You can, you can try using the staple, but I find it hard. But the staple you can use for something else too, or sticky tape. Um, if it's going to hang on a tree, you've got to have some string, haven't you? So just cut off a bit of string. to make it be able to fly. To make it fly, you need a little engine, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, yes, and that's what they look like, flying angels up there. So just a bit of sticky tape on the back there, like that. And um, 
One of the, uh, Kate might help you from time to time, but first we're going to sing a song and then there'll be some helping going on, okay? All right, so if anyone really needs help, yeah, Alistair's there as well, fantastic. We're going to have angels singing glory. Good morning and welcome to everybody today to Living Faith Church. For those who don't know me, my name is Bruce, I'm an elder here, and you're most welcome today, and a special welcome today to Liz and Martin, who have joined us for the first time as visitors. And welcome to everybody at home as well. It's good to have you sharing also with us in this time of worship. We come to our community news now and the first of our notices is about the ladies night out which is going to be on the 18th of January. Uh, there are 20 places that have been booked. If you would like to uh, participate in that please see Leanne who's over there at the side. The next slide. We're going to once again do Lenten studies this year for 2022, which will start around Sunday the 13th of February. It's a seven-week series based on the book Walking with Jesus by John Birch, and there will be more information provided towards the end of January. Coming up will be our Living Faith Church Annual General Meeting, which will be held mid-February 2022, at a date to be confirmed. A reminder that we've got our church family camp. We're all one family here at Living Faith Church, so everybody is welcome to attend the camp. The theme for the camp is Noticing God Every Day, and this is from the 25th to the 27th of February 2022, and there are flyers down there in the narthex on the table if you would like to take a form with you to uh, complete your registration to come to the camp. For those who are watching at home, if you would like to connect with us at Living Faith Church, we'd love to receive your email at welcome at livingfaithchurch.org.au and it's great when we do receive people's uh, emails at least we know that you're out there watching. And finally, uh, there's a, a, as usual, we have an invitation for prayer at the end of the service. If you would like prayer for yourself or for another person, feel free to come to the front after the service and someone will pray for you and pray with you. We come now to our transformative prayers. So let us pray. 
Word of God, you dwelt in the highest heavens, yet you chose to become human and dwell among us, bringing light to the darkness of our lives. As we enter this new year, 2022, we bring now our transformative prayers for your world and your people. Throughout the ages you have delivered your people from oppression. Liberate all who are in bondage and give voice to the silenced peoples of the world, that all of your people may be led to freedom. May we who have received your light be transformed to grow into your likeness so that others may see your light. Word of God, in the beginning with God, you chose us before time to be your holy people. We bring to you our prayers for the church. You have made us your children by adoption. Unite us as brothers and sisters of one family and let division and enmity cease, that by our lives we may better proclaim your love to all the world. May we who have received your light be transformed to grow into your likeness so that others may see your light. Word of God, in the beginning with God, you chose to become human and dwell among us, bringing light into the darkness of our lives. We bring to you our prayers for all with whom we share our lives. You know the joys and difficulties of human life. Be present with us in our daily living, that our dealings with others may reflect your spirit of generosity and forgiveness. May we who have received your light be transformed to grow into your likeness, so that others may see your light. Word of God, in the beginning with God, through you all things were brought to life. We bring you our prayers for all in special need of your life-giving presence at this time. And in this moment of silence, we bring before your throne of grace those people and situations that are on our hearts and minds at this time. You share the pains of your people and you come to turn sorrow into gladness. Comfort and heal those who suffer and strengthen those who minister to them that we may find courage to embrace the future in trust and hope. May we who have received your light be transformed to grow into your likeness so that others may see your light. We pray these things in the name of Jesus and together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Many of you will have already made your offerings by electronic funds transfer. For others who have brought it with you today, during the next song, your free will offering for the work of God will be received. Please place it in the bowl as the stewards pass your row, rather than they won't be passing the bowl around because of COVID. So let us now sing My Lighthouse. You are the peace in my troubled sea. 
this money and use it for the work of your church. Take our gifts and use them for the growth of your kingdom. Take our witness and use it for the spread of the gospel. Take our service and use it to make, your, make known your love. Accept all we bring to you today and use it through your power and for your glory in the name of Christ. Amen. Our second reading comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. Just a matter of interest, raise your hand if you made a New Year's resolution. Anyone here? <laughs> that, that tells a story, doesn't it? <laughs> and the story it tells is a, a story told all over the place, which is there's a general tiredness in the population, and you and I are no exception. So when it comes to, can I muster the effort to make a New Year's resolution, you think, oh, oh, <laughs> this seems all too much, perhaps next year. And, but for a Christian, that's, that's not altogether a good thing. New Year's resolutions, um, look, the idea is not a bad one, it's just often we make resolutions about the wrong sorts of things. For a Christian, a resolution is a good thing. It's a commitment to follow Christ in a certain way. And as we unpack the story today that we heard in John chapter 1, uh, <clears throat> our theme really is about being in the light rather than relaxing in the darkness. One of the problems with 
feeling as though you couldn't be bothered or it's all too much, is that it allows uh, evil or darkness to hold sway. And that just doesn't seem right. It doesn't sit right, does it? So we come into this passage and let's see if we can uh, find for ourselves a, a place which is not going to wear us out with the effort, <laughs> but is able to inspire us to actually see things through a new light in a new way. So let's look at this Bible passage today. Uh, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So this uh, uh, Bible passage from John, it starts with the, the universe being made by the word and it taps into Genesis when God spoke and the universe was created over the six days. And so that word uh, John says is not a series of words but is actually uh, a word and that's the Son of God, it was the Word through whom everything was made. So uh, the, the Word turns out to be you know, the life, you know, and the life is also the light of humanity. Now there's a lot of big words being tossed in there. So um, it says, in him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. So suddenly we've moved from talking about physical creation and uh, light and darkness being physical things, just like night and day. And now we're talking about light shining in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Now the darkness is seen more metaphorically. And it's, it's, it's talking about that sort of evil that is in the world and that is in us and that is in society that brings out the worst in us. So... This image that John has is about the light coming into the world, but a world that has got a lot of darkness in it. And this light doesn't just shine light that exposes things. It brings life, just like the sunlight brings life to plants. So the Gospel of John is very different from the other Gospels, you may have guessed already. Let's have a quick look. Uh, John is very different because it's uh, cosmic. Uh, it is... That's interesting. Okay. Um, cosmic, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Like, it's really big picture stuff in John. Whereas, you know, Matthew starts with basically um, uh, a genealogy of Jesus. So these are his human parents, and these were the parents of the parents, and these were the parents of the parents of the parents. Um, so very human. You know, Mark starts with John the Baptist. So you're starting in the history of a particular historical figure. So... Um, you know, and Luke is uh, starting uh, again with um, the parentage of John the Baptist taking place in certain lives, etc. But John, here we are, the beginning of the universe, the word, etc. And there's light, and there's life, and there's big words. In John, John is very different in that you know the, the other gospels have got lots of teachings, etc. And and uh, great wisdom. In John, there's only one commandment in the whole thing, and this is it. A new command I give to you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples if you love one another. You know, John was written uh, 30 years after all the other Gospels. So he wrote it because he wanted it to bring out something different to the other three. He, he wasn't just revising the other three and saying, well, this is a, a better version. He's saying, no, he wants to bring out something different in the story about Jesus, and he highlights that. Uh, and so John, in, in the difference, uses special words, uh, quite different to the other Gospels, uh, and these words really stand out. These are the key words through which the lens is focused on Jesus and you understand who Jesus is. So word, uh, so um, the Son of God, Jesus didn't start existence as Jesus when he was born at Christmas. He had a pre-existence as the Son of God through whom the whole universe was created. So the baby born in Bethlehem was the creator. Like, it's, it's mind-blowing stuff. Um, life isn't just about human life as lived. It's, it's uh, abundant life. It's uh, li living life to the full is how it's seen in John. You know, light is not just uh, physical light that exposes, but light that brings life into our lives and uh, shoves out the darkness. So it's a contrasting image. 
you know, truth as opposed to falsehood. Um, and the world, uh, the world is seen as the world of human beings without God. It's used that way. Um, so Christ comes into the world to save the world. He saves the world that is without God. So the, the image is, is powerful. There's other, other words there, but John is very different. And there's, there's the light of the world shining in the darkness, the blackness all around. And, and I like this image because the light comes in not just as a serious exercise, but is an example himself of living life to the full, of living life in harmony with God and seeking to live in harmony with other people and loving people and forgiving people and restoring people. So this, this image of, of the light coming into the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it is strong in John. And it's a way of seeing life, I guess. Uh, and that's what John's trying to give us, some tools with which to see life. So this image of light and darkness is one of those tools with which to see life and how to see ourselves and how to see Christ. So in John, the darkness appears at a few key points. Uh, one of those is in John chapter 3, after the whole thing about being born again. Another key point is here, um, where the darkness reigns, it says. The hour has come. And the image of darkness, this is Judas' betrayal of Jesus, is in, it's not just dark at night, but darkness as in humans living without God. Uh, this is exemplified here. And it's shown in several ways, not just the, the soldiers who are there who are against Jesus. So they're obviously directly against Jesus. There's direct conflict. So that's one sort of darkness. But another darkness exemplified in this image is Judas, who is a friend and a disciple who betrays him. So that's another sort of darkness that betrays him with a kiss. And that's, that's awful. It appears to be friendly, it appears to be warm, but it's exactly the opposite. The duplicity of human beings is exemplified in this picture. That's another form of darkness, one that in one sense we're all familiar with uh, through advertising, which uh, you know, pretends to be our best friend but is actually in it for, for self-interest. They're trying to sell your products not for your benefit but for theirs. Uh, when it comes to... Uh, uh, another form of darkness is Peter, who you can see there on your left. And uh, so Peter's there and he's just pulling out the sword. And Peter's a good-hearted guy and he's wanting to do the right thing. Um, but this is not the way of Jesus. And so you see Peter is being tempted into darkness at this point. He's, for all the right reasons, he's doing the wrong thing. And he cuts off the ear of, of uh, one of the servants uh, who is present there. So we, we know that story. But the, what I'm talking about is darkness and how darkness is in each of the characters there except for Jesus. It's obviously in the characters who are, are violent. It's obviously in the character who seems to be a friend but is not. Uh, but it's also in the character who is doing the wrong thing for the right reasons. So a much more subtle form of darkness. So the idea of darkness, while it seems very simplistic, you know, there's light and there's dark, actually is illustrated in many different ways in the story of John. John understands that darkness is a subtle thing in the world, as does much of uh, the writings of the New Testament and Old Testament. This, this image is actually a paper cut. Um, I love it. Because um, how do you take a single red sheet of paper and, and create that? I mean, wow. Um, <laughs> and the subtlety of it. So all those little red lines, fine red lines that you see are actually, you know, paper um, that's been cut, squares inside it and things like that. Brilliantly done. But what it's showing is Jesus is standing in the doorway. So it illustrates Jesus as the door. But he also brings light into the world. And it's the world of people. And when the light comes, some people rush into the light. They rush into, they're drawn to the light. And why are they drawn to the light? It's because these are people who value love, who value peace, 
who value joy, they value the goodness of life. It's actually a quality of all people. But in, in some people, they actually are um, distracted. Uh, it's, I don't know how well you can see the picture from where you are. It's, it's, it is a bit of a challenge to see. But uh, down the bottom right, uh, there's people who are sleeping through it. Um, they're horizontal, sort of. Uh, but just above that, um, there's one woman who's trying to go into the light and she's being held back by a man, pulled back into the darkness. And that's how relationships can work too. When um, you know, I was uh, leading uh, the youth ministry in Warrigal years ago, we used to talk about um, bad love. Um, love is a really important thing in the life of uh, adolescents and young adults. Uh, considering, um, you know, will I have a life partner, will I not? Uh, what will that person be like? How do I choose the right person? Um, should I actually choose anyone? Uh, all of those sort of issues are buzzing through the mind. But we used to talk about bad love as, as when a couple would fall in love, but they would bring out the worst in each other. They would bring out the worst in each other. That's what we call bad love. So the, the feelings of love were real, but what they brought out in each other was nasty. It wasn't good at all. And not just towards themselves, uh, but towards other people. So um, everybody has you know, that, that light and darkness within them, but that relationship would bring out the worst. So uh, that's illustrated there. And that, that's true of all of us to some extent. Um, there are things and there are people in our lives that can bring out the worst in us and others who can bring out the best in us. Considering, that's worth considering as we look into this passage further. There's others, um, so just above them, there's uh, some people playing cards. And they're basically just having a good time. They're not interested in the light. Uh, they're quite happy to just relax and play games, really. Life is just about playing one enjoyable game after another. So light and darkness... Um, they don't care, they're happy to play and relax in the darkness, accept the world as it is. And there's uh, lots of other images there. I changed the picture. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> to make it easier or worse? <coughs> anyway, um, amazing special effects that you can have. Um, it sort of inverted or highlighted some of the characters more. But the, the long and the short of it is, in this passage, it's talking about those who are drawn to the light. And, you know, there's people dancing in the light. They're throwing up their arms and they're enjoying the whole experience of being in the light because the light brings life, life in all its fullness. Um, but others are just relaxing in the darkness. So, um, relaxing in the darkness. There was... A, uh, I was really struck by a Wilcox comic in the age this week, which I cannot show you for copyright reasons. Um, again, the age we live in. But anyway, uh, it goes like this. Sick of lockdown? It's time to lower your expectations and celebrate all the things you've learned to live with, like carbon emissions and climate change, corruption in parliaments, a culture of sexism, complete lack of humanity. And the images associated with these um, are to do with the, uh, well, climate change is pretty obvious. Uh, I don't know if you're beginning to get used to hearing that this was the biggest tornado we've ever seen, this was the biggest fire we've ever seen, this is uh, the biggest floods we've ever seen, this is the biggest cold snap we've ever seen. Uh, you just keep hearing it um, continuously. Um, perhaps we're getting used to it because um, we think we can. Uh, we don't have to hurry to slow down climate change. Uh, corruption. Uh, I, I'm just so much corruption, uh, beginning with wage theft, uh, beginning with um, uh, pork barrelling. Um, you know all those uh, the sports rorts thing um, about uh, all the. Um, grants that were given that favoured a particular party uh, at the election. 
and uh, other things, culture of sexism, uh, the exposure of sexism, you know, in our foremost leaders in parliament. You know, I kept wondering over the years, uh, as we've seen outstanding women leaders in both sides of politics, and yet we've only ever had one, one female politician make it to prime minister. And even that was cut short. Even that was cut short. Um, in the liberal side of things, uh, Julie Bishop, I mean, she was amazing. How did she not rise to the top? Uh, you know, uh, Tanya Plibersek could probably uh, you know, talk Anthony Albanese um, into the background very easily. Why do the women not rise to the top? Well, we've been learning this year about how women are treated in Parliament. And it's shocking. I, I think it's like it's, they're back in the 70s sort of thing. Um, so do we get used to a culture of sexism? Complete lack of humanity. Um, they've got a picture of the plane leaving Afghanistan and people on the ground. We in Australia are, have got used to being pretty ruthless, I've got to say. So um, can anyone remind me of how many uh, refugees we agreed to take as a nation? Anyone remember that figure? How much? 30,000? Um, I think originally it was a bit less, but they bumped it up to 30,000. Do you know how many we've actually accepted? 3,000. They're taking their time, you know, they'll get around to it. You know, meanwhile, these people are at uh, high-risk situations, uh, and many are in refugee camp in Pakistan, uh, where it's snowing. But no particular rush, is there? We get used to being inhuman to other human beings. So our challenge is, are we going to relax in the darkness? Are we going to be like those people playing cards up there, saying, oh, it's, gee, it's been a tough year. I think I'll, <laughs> I'll just relax for a bit. And uh, is that the only other alternative? We just lost our energy, lost our mojo, so we're just going to relax and accept the appalling injustice, the corruption in politics, the sexism, the uh, lack of action about carbon emissions and climate change. Is that our only alternative? We're feeling a bit tired, so let's just, I don't know, watch Netflix? I don't think so. I think there's a, a sense in which our passage is calling to us to not just try and muster up more energy, because it's tiring just thinking of that, but actually focus on the light. Focus more on the light. If you're going to make a resolution for this year, it's this. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look more at Christ. Find your energy and life and light there. That's what John's Gospel says to us, that you will find your energy and your life, not on your own or by your spiritual practices or by whatever you do, but by turning your eyes to the light who has come into the world to allow yourself to be drawn to Jesus Christ himself. And yes, yeah, sometimes that involves spiritual practices, reading the Bible, singing songs, and, um, and praying, allowing yourself a bit of space. Sometimes it means not doing some things. They talk about feeding the, which wolf are you going to feed? Um, we're very tempted in our society to feed uh, the darkness in ourselves, the dark wolf, if you like. So, you know, putting an end to some of those practices that may be in your life, about um, very dark forms of entertainment that we may watch or listen to, um, whether it be, as I say, on Netflix or whether it be a podcast or something like that, to attend to what comes into our ears and through our eyes and see more light and less darkness. These are simple practices that help to, to bring us more into the light. Oops. Oh, there we go. I'll go back. Oh, there we are there. Forget it. <laughs>
back to us. It's time for us to pray. We can't do this on our own, can we? Let's turn to God. Now, God, we are not the light. You are the light. We are not the, the energy that will fundamentally change the world. You are that life, that light. And so once again, we come to you and we come in our tiredness, our COVID lockdown tiredness. And we're aware that this might lead us into being lazy and just lying around in the dark and accepting things that we shouldn't accept. Help us, our God. Turn our eyes again to Jesus. Help us in our practices at home and our choices we make. Right now, if there's anything that you want to change in our lives so that we live more in that light, dance more in that light, let us know in our hearts. And Lord, may we be bold enough to ask you to help us to choose and commit ourselves to live in the light and enjoy your abundant life in 2022. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So we've uh, talked about following, and so now we're going to sing a song that, is, that fills out our commitment. I will follow. When you go, I'll go. When you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. No other blessing is needed than this. Go out into the world and stay in the light. Amen.